you are seeing a film that shows a ball rolling can you tell if it's being played correctly or in reverse we cannot tell but what if the ball stops then we can tell it is being run properly if you run it backward the ball starts to move by itself which is an impossible event where does this direction of time the difference between the past and the future come from our views on the nature of time have changed over the years until the beginning of the century we believed that 1 minute for us was the same as 1 minute for someone on mars we assumed that our clocks had the same rhythm as that of someone sitting in a plane however the discovery that the speed of light appeared the same to every observer no matter how he was moving led to the theory of relativity and in that one had to abandon the idea that there was a unique absolute time we have discussed this in one of our previous videos about time so watch that first if you want to understand why our understanding of time is actually wrong to resolve the mystery of difference between past and future the flow of time let's go back to the mid 19th century at that time rudolf clausius was working on mechanical theory of heat and he formulated one of the most famous statement of second law of thermodynamics heat can never pass from colder to warmer body without some other change water cannot boil itself by drawing heat from ice this behavior is fundamentally different from what happens with falling objects a ball may fall but it can also rebound and rise again but heat cannot reverse its flow spontaneously this is the only fundamental law of physics that distinguishes the past from future no other physical laws differentiate between past and future not newton's laws governing mechanics not the equations for electricity and magnetism formulated by maxwell not einstein theory of relativity not the principle of quantum mechanics formulated by heisenberg schrodinger and dirac the ball is slowing down and coming to rest due to friction friction produces heat only where there is heat there is a distinction between past and future the link between time and heat is therefore fundamental every time a difference between the past and the future emerges heat is involved in every sequence of events that becomes absurd if projected backward there is something that is heating up thinking also produces heat clausius introduced a quantity that measures this irreversible progress of heat in only one direction and called it entropy this quantity increases or remains the same but never decreases in an isolated process it is the only equation of fundamental physics that knows any difference between past and future the only one that speaks of the flowing of time behind this unusual equation an entire world is hidden it was ludwig boltzmann who began to see what lies behind this equation throwing us into one of our most digging dive to us understanding the elementary structure of our world sadi carnot who worked on improving the performance of steam engines thought that heat was a substance a fluid he was wrong heat is the microscopic agitation of molecules hot water is a water in which molecules are very agitated cold water is a water in which molecules are only little agitated by the late 19th century many scientists did not believe the existence of atoms and molecules but burjman was absolutely convinced they existed looking at the sun going down the eyes of copernicus had seen the world turning looking at the glass of still water the eyes of burjman saw atoms and molecules chaotically moving we see the water in glass like astronauts saw the earth from the moon calm gleaming blue from the moon they could see nothing of exuberant agitation of life on earth its plants and animals desire and despairs they only saw a quiet blue planet similarly within glass of water there exists a chaotic and dynamic world we are unaware of millions of molecules there and what they are doing this microscopic chaos never stops and stares at everything 
if some molecules are still the fast moving ones nearby bump into them and make them move too this is how heat spreads when cold things are heated in contact with hot ones their molecules get collided by hot ones and are pushed into motion in this way they heat up thermal agitation is like a continuous shuffling of a pack of cards if the cards are in order the shuffling disorders them in this way heat passes from hot to cold and not reverse by shuffling by the natural disordering the growth of entropy is the natural and inevitable rise of this disorder this is what boltzmann realized there is no difference between past and future in the elementary laws of the universe it is this natural disordering that leads to gradually less particular less special situations and makes us feel that something is moving forward it was a brilliant intuition and a correct one but does it clarify the difference between past and future it does not why in one of the two directions of time the one we call past were things more ordered if we observe a phenomenon that begins in a state of lower entropy it is obvious why entropy increases because in the process of reshuffling everything becomes disordered but why do the phenomena that we observe around us in the cosmos begins in a state of lower entropy in the first place if the first 26 cards in pack are all red and next 26 are all black then we say that this configuration of cards is particular and ordered but when we shuffle this the order is lost the initial ordered configuration was configuration of low entropy but notice that it is particular if we look at the color of the cards red or black it is particular because i am looking at the color another configuration will be particular if the first 26 cards consist of only hearts and spades or if they are all odd numbers or if they share any other characteristic If you think about it carefully every configuration is particular therefore configuration being particular and special depends on what parameters we are looking at the notion of particularity is born only at the moment we begin to see the universe in blurred and approximate way boltzmann has shown that entropy exists because we describe the world in blurred fashion He has shown that entropy is precisely the quantity that counts how many are different configuration that our blurred vision does not distinguish between. Heat, entropy and the idea that the past had lower entropy are all part of an approximate statistical way of describing nature. The difference between past and future is deeply linked to this blurring. But what if we could see every tiny detail of the world at a microscopic level? Would the flow of time disappear? The answer is yes. If we observe all the details of the exact microscopic state of the things, then the difference between past and future vanishes. We often say that causes come before effects, but in the fundamental laws of nature, there is no real difference between these two. The laws of physics create patterns that connect events across time, but they work the same way whether time moves forward or backward. There is no fundamental way to tell what was the cause and what was the effects if we started to see all the parameters. On a microscopic level, there is no real difference between past and future. If I could see every tiny detail, actual dance of millions of molecules, then the future would look just like the past this is the disconcerting conclusion that comes from the boltzmann work the distinction between past and future exists only because we see the world in blurred and incomplete way it's a conclusion that leaves us surprised is it really possible that perception so vivid basic depends on the fact that we cannot see the world in all of its minute detail Boltzmann's most famous equation, which captures the essence of entropy, is engraved on his tomb in Vienna. His life was blended of brilliance and struggle. Appointed as a professor at just 
celebrated by emperors and it often misunderstood by his peers. Despite rulers nudging physics, his work faced strong opposition, leaving him caught between moments of triumph and deep despair. In the end, while on vacation in Duino, Italy, Ludwig Burgmann tragically took his own life by hanging himself in 1906. The entropy of the world does not depend only on the configuration of the world. It also depends on the way in which we are blurring the world. And this depends on what variables of the world are that we interact with. Perhaps our part of the world interacts with those special variables through which entropy of the world in the far past appears very low to us. The initial low entropy of the universe and the arrow of time might be more a result of our perspective than an inherent property of the universe itself. Think about how people believed the sky rotated around the earth. It seemed obvious for centuries, but we later realized it's actually the earth that spins. The same could be true for the direction of time. Maybe time feels like it flows forward, not because the universe forces it to, but because our way of perceiving the world makes it seem that way. We are tuned to certain aspects of reality, and those aspects make time appear to move in one direction. Traces of past exist, while traces of future do not, simply because the past had low entropy. For a trace to be left behind, something must stop or become fixed, which only happens through irreversible process that convert energy into heat. This is why computers heat up when processing information, or brain generate heat when thinking. The abundance of past traces gives us the sense that past is fixed and determined, while the lack of future traces makes the future feel open and uncertain. Space and time become more complex when we consider its quantum properties. If we could measure the duration of an interval with the most precise clock imaginable, we would find that the time measured by this clock takes on only certain discrete spatial values. It is discontinuous. There exists a minimum interval of time beyond which the very concept of time loses its meaning, even in its most fundamental sense. It is not possible to predict exactly, for instance, where an electron will appear tomorrow. Between one appearance and another, the electron has no precise position, as if it were dispersed in a cloud of probability. We say this superposition of positions. Space and time is like an electron. They are dynamic, physical entities that too fluctuate and can exist in multiple configurations at once. Therefore, the distinction between past, present and future becomes uncertain and indeterminate. Just as a particle can be spread out in space, so too can the boundaries between past and future blur and fluctuate. In future videos, we will explore these ideas in more detail. There is no single time. Time passes at different rhythm according to place and according to speed. The difference between past and future does not exist in elementary equations of the world. The notion of the present does not work in the vast universe. It fluctuates, emerges only through interaction, and ceases to have meaning below a certain fundamental scale. So after all this, what is left of time? Is there a world where time behaves very differently than we think? What new discoveries about time do you think the future of physics might reveal? Please do share your thoughts in the comments and again, thanks for watching.